Hey everyone, welcome to ISTQB exam question and answer series. And in this video, I'm going to cover another five exam questions with detailed explanation. So the first exam question for this particular video is which of the following is a benefit of early and frequent stakeholder feedback? Okay, so benefit of early and frequent stakeholder feedback. That's what we have to figure out from these four options and we have to select one option. So let's go through these options. Changes to requirements are understood and implemented earlier. Okay, looks very close. It ensures business stakeholders understand user requirement. No, that's not basically the benefit of early and frequent stakeholder feedback. Early and frequent stakeholder feedback is from the stakeholders, right? So it ensures business stakeholders understand user requirement. That's not what is this statement all, all about. It allows product owners to change their requirements as often as they want. Absolutely baseless statement. No, that's not what helps or basically the benefit of early and frequent stakeholder feedback. The change to the requirement as often as they want. That's not what the benefit is. End users are told which requirement will not be impl implemented prior to release. That's a absolutely incorrect statement as well. So end users are not told which requirement will not be implemented, right? So that's that's no software release tells that end users that these are the requirements, requirements that we are not implementing, right? That's not a correct statement at all. So the correct option is A, changes to requirements are understood and implemented earlier, right? So that's where early and frequent stakeholder feedback helps the development team that if there are any feedback, any changes to the requirement from the stakeholder, they are understood and implemented earlier rather than waiting for the later feedback from the stakeholder. So that's where agile practices help in engaging the stakeholders in all the different activities. So you get early and frequent feedback and that's the benefit. Okay. So now moving to the next question, the second question of this particular video, given the following review types. So these are the four review types, technical, informal, inspection, walkthrough and the following descriptions, four descriptions. Now, based on this, we have to basically select one option. What the option is asking about which of the following best matches the review types and the description. Again, the mapping question and we have to figure out basically which option we can easily eliminate. Now, out of these review, if you are 100% sure about a particular review type, just go through and read about that, right? For example, if we talk about informal review. All right. Informal review doesn't have the documentation, right? So there is no formal documentation as such in the informal review. So let's see which option or description has this particular and we can map it with the informal review. So if we see includes objectives such as gaining consensus, generating new ideas and motivating authors to improve includes objectives such as educating reviewers, gaining consensus, generating new ideas and detecting potential defects. The main objective is detecting potential defects and it requires metrics collection to support process improvement. D says the main objective is detecting potential defects and it generates no formal documented output, right? So basically now we figured out that okay, informal review goes with D. So we can say two maps with D and now let's see where exactly two is mapping to D. So out of these four, we can easily eliminate A option, right? Because two is mapping to D only in B and in D. So A and C are gone. Now we just have to work out within B and C and come up with the answer. Now with mapping two and D, you will see the four is mapping to B. So easily we can say that if I'm 100% sure that with the informal review, no formal documented documentation is there, right? So now I can say say that this is also correct the option four with B. So that means walkthrough is mapping to B. So four with B, which is saying includes objectives such as educating reviewers, gaining consensus, generating new ideas and detecting potential defects, right? So that is correct for walkthrough. So that is also correct. Now we have to figure out out of one A and three C or one maps to C or three maps to A. Okay. So let's go through with the technical review. So technical review are the thorough ones basically. Um, uh, an inspection is also a thorough one. So if we talk about technical review and inspection, that's what we are left with, right? So technical review, if we see 1A, so includes objectives such as gaining consensus, generating new ideas and motivating authors to improve. Absolutely maps correctly with the technical review because it's more of for generating new ideas. And if we talk about inspection, this is more of a formalized review, the most formal sort of review. So if we talk about 3 
3 and then the main objective of 3 which is inspection is detecting potential defects right and it requires metric collection to support process improvement so 3 mapping to C is absolutely correct and 1 mapping to A is absolutely correct so 1 A 2 D 3 C and 4 B so that means B is the correct option and C D is not the correct option why because D says one mapping to C. So basically technical review says that main objective is detecting potential defects. No, that's not what the technical review is all about. It, it's about gaining consensus, generating new ideas and motivating authors to improve. That's that's what the technical review is all about. Okay, so the correct answer is B for this particular question. Okay, now moving to the next one, question number 18 of this set and third of this particular video, which of the following is a factor that contributes to a successful review? Okay, so the fact that contributes to a successful review out of these four options we have to select one now let's see these factors and which one contributes to successful review ensure management participates participate as reviewers split large work products into smaller parts this looks very correct statement let's mark it set reviewer evaluation as an objective absolutely baseless statement the reviews are not done to evaluate reviewer right that's not the purpose of the reviews plan to cover one document per review now that's also incorrect why because document could be really really big right and what the successful review is all about whether you are able to whether whosoever are there in the review meetings are able to consume and then also focus and pay attention and provide feedback so if you try to cover very lengthy document or complete document if you are saying one document at per review that might be lengthy document and that is contradictory so this is also not correct and that makes us to choose the second option which was very close basically splitting the large work products into smaller part is the best factor or the key factor that will help in contributing a successful review first one ensuring management participate as reviewer is not at all the correct option for successful reviews management can be there but they do not participate as reviewers okay so splitting large work product into smaller parts is what contributes to successful review now moving to the fourth question what is the main difference between black box test technique and experience based test technique okay so the difference they are asking main difference between black box test technique and the experience based test technique out of the four we have to select one option so what is difference main difference test object the test level at, at which the test techniques is used the test basis the software development life cycle in which the test technique can be used right no this is absolutely incorrect because none of these black box uh, and the experience based test technique are dependent on the sdlc which sdlc you choose right so that's absolutely incorrect so we have cancelled that out okay now moving to the test basis so this looks the correct option and i'll explain why okay let's mark it test object no so when we talk about the black box test technique the main difference between experience based and uh, test uh, black box test technique that's the test object is not the main difference the test level at which the test techniques are performed is also not the main difference right the test basis is the main difference why because when we talk about the black box test design or testing technique the basis which the testers baseline to is what is the requirement right so requirements the documented requirements that's what is basically used in black box test techniques to baseline what you are going to test against but in experience based test techniques the experience based test technique do not rely or basically have limited documentation requirement and the details or the test basis available so it is more with the experience and the knowledge of the tester that the tester uses to formulate the basis and that's the main difference between black box test technique and the experience based testing technique so the test basis is the correct answer okay now moving to the last question of this particular video which is about the equivalence partition all right so now you are testing a pin validator which accepts valid pins 
and rejects invalid pins. Okay, so valid pin and invalid pin. A pin is a sequence of digits. A pin is valid if it consists of four digits and at least two of them are different. Okay, at least two of them are different. So it should be four digit and at least two are different. Which of the following sets of input test data cover all equivalence partition for this scenario? Okay, so we have to first, what we have to first figure out is we have to select one option, but how we are going to conclude first thing is we have to first find how many equivalence partitions are there in this particular scenario. And then we have to see which of these options will cover all of these equivalence partition, right? So following sets of input test data cover all equivalence partitions for this scenario. So if we talk about the valid and invalid, all right. So anything, first thing is based on the digit, right? So we can say invalid based on the digit. Okay. So any digit less than, you know, one to three is invalid, right? That's invalid pin. And then any four plus, so basically five plus that's invalid pin as well. Okay. And then within four, so if it is a four digit pin, then also there is a condition whether it's invalid or valid. Okay. So four digit pin is valid. So there is only one, you can say valid partition, but then there is a condition in the valid partition that two digits are different, right? So we can say two different digits. All right. So that's one of the valid partition. However, there could be four digits. So now based on digit, this is invalid based on digit. This is invalid, but then these, this, this is four digits, right? So four digits, we can say four digits and two digits are different so that is a valid pin all right any this particular scenario is a valid pin but this could be four digit pin and all are same all digits are same okay so this is also invalid partition right when all digits are same all four are same then we have four digit okay wherein three digits are same right three digits same this is also invalid partition okay if there are apart from this so basically four digits three digits same that means it's a invalid partition all four are same it's a invalid partition uh it, invalid partition even though it is four digit pin then we are left with two digits same but two different that's a valid partition right and if all four digits are different that again is part of this valid partition right so based on this digit we have these three partitions and then based on digit numbers we have these two invalid partitions so basically four invalid partition one valid partition so overall five partition that i can basically analyze here okay so which of the following set of input test data cover all equivalence partitions for this scenario so if we see let's see this particular data so option a says 112 which is basically you know this covers this covers the first invalid partition okay then four digit this is four digit but all four are same right so all four are same so basically this covers one one of this partition so these two are covered right then one two three four Okay, so that is basically all four digit. This is four digit pin and all of them are different. So basically this is valid pin. So this covers this one and then one, two, three, four, five, six, which is basically again five plus, right? So this is five plus, which covers this particular partition, invalid partition. Now here you can th see that this is covering one. This is covering one. Let's analyze these. So this one covers here. One, two, three is again here. Triple one is one of the invalid and one, two, three, four. So this one is left behind again. C option one, two, which is basically two digits. So again, invalid. Then again, one, one, two is here. Triple one, two is again four digit, but still invalid, right? So it comes here. So this one valid partition is left and this one is covering this. So this is not also true. And then D option is these two are covering just invalid partition. This one is covering this one and this last is covering this one. So again, valid. So none of the, them are covering this invalid, uh, the valid partition out of these three. So these three are incorrect. Only first one is correct. Now here you can see that we can also based on, you know, partition. So this is invalid. This is valid. This is invalid. Now these two, you can conclude as one as well because here we have specifically mentioned that out of I mean we have granularly segregated based on the digit as well as invalid partition and come with the four and similarly you can also in case you want to easily conclude or just say invalid with based on digit so you can say two digits same and then these you can combine you can say wherein more than two digits are are same right or here two digits are different but here more than two digits are same so both of them will fall in the same category right because there are just four options so that's that's how but 
but even if it is this way 5 so you can easily see that this is the one that covers all of the partitions that we have if we just consider this as one right so because they are saying all equivalence partition that means they have haven't gone through this granular level so that means you just have to create four partitions one for valid with two different digits one for invalid with more than two same digits and invalid two invalid partition based on the pin digit numbers okay and this is covering all of that so a is the correct option for this particular question a little tricky but overall if you understand how you are going to create equivalence partition and segregate the data it will be really easy and that's why i'm covering these details in the exam question so it's also helping you to understand the concept and attempt these questions okay so that's all for this video in the next one i'll cover another five exam questions thank you see you in the next one